If you or someone you love had a stroke, recovery can feel overwhelming, but there's hope. Your brain is built to adapt and rebuild itself step by step. Today, let's explore the Brunson stages of stroke recovery. It's your roadmap to healing and how you can help your brain rebuild itself. Developed by Sidney Bronstrom in the 1960s, this approach shows how motor control comes back in seven stages. It's a stepwise process that takes place over time. Most rapid recovery will take place in the first three months after stroke, slows down a little three to six months, tapers six to 12 months. After a year, further healing is variable. So how can you make use of this information? First of all, Brunson stages will help you understand how the brain and body connect, heal, and what to expect as recovery starts. Use this as your roadmap. Each stage is a milestone marker of your path to regaining as much movement as you can. While full recovery is possible, it's not the most common outcome. Approximately 10 to 20% of stroke survivors do achieve full recovery. 25% may experience only minor improvements. 40% have moderate to severe impairments requiring specialized care. And for some, stroke can lead to chronic disabilities that may last a lifetime. But do not let that deter you. Instead, see this as an opportunity to gain knowledge, control, and actively take back as much function as you can. We're using the Brunson stages here as a conceptual model to understand the brain's healing process. When you understand the process, you can do much better. Let's begin by me introducing you to your brain. Okay, what is that image? It's a homunculus. This is an internal map of your motor system on the brain. All right, on the far right, notice the red stripe. That's your primary motor cortex where movement starts. Right next to it is the blue strip. That's the sensory cortex. Say you grab a very hot cup of coffee. The sensation travels back to your brain and registers on the sensory cortex. It's unpleasant. Then you decide to put the coffee cup down because it's too hot to hold. That's where the motor cortex comes into play. Also, notice how much area of the brain is dedicated to certain body parts. Take your hands. Notice the dexterity of your fingers and hands. You can write with your hands, but not your feet. That's how the brain is organized. One way to think of the brain is to think of it as a computer. The computer connects the mouse and the keyboard using wiring. The brain connects to the body using nerves. Nerves can be thought of as electrical wiring. After a stroke, the damaged part of the brain has trouble sending signals down nerves to the muscles it is trying to stimulate, but the brain has some repair capabilities and the Brunson stages are the stages of healing. I'd explain every stage using this analogy. It's a straightforward process. The more you use a motor pathway, the stronger and easier it gets. Think of how we all learn to ride a bike. Repetition and consistency are key. Also, tracking progress is very helpful so you can see where you are and where you are going. Make sure to grab your free Brunson Stages Stroke Recovery Tracker in the description section of this video. Let's move on to the Brunson Stages. There are seven of them. The first stage is flaccidity. This is immediately after a stroke. The muscles are completely limp. No voluntary movement, no tone. It's a tough stage, but it's also the beginning of your recovery. In this stage, usually therapy is tethered more to doing passive range of motion to stop the joints and muscles from stiffening up. The next stage, stage two, is where spasticity starts to appear. You might start noticing increased stiffness in your joints and muscles or slight involuntary movements. These are signs that the brain is starting to reconnect. Think of it this way, when the brain is connected to muscles with good wiring, the muscles are calm. But when there is no signal or impaired signal from the brain, the muscles get jumpy and tight. So in this stage, you continue with the passive range of motion to avoid stiffness, but you can add a little bit of assisted motion where you can use your stronger side to help the weaker side move, like a spotter in the gym. Stage three is the peak of spasticity. Muscles may feel tighter, movements may feel more restricted, but 
you can start to move voluntarily, even if it's only in patterns. This is where rehab gets really powerful because therapy helps guide the brain to rewire correctly. Yes, you can lay down the foundations. In stage four, spasticity begins to decline. You start to regain control. Your movements are no longer stuck in patterns and you can actually do more isolated motion, such as just doing the biceps. By stage five, complex movement starts returning. They are more controlled. You can add some resistance to your therapy, such as weights and therabands. And this stage is exciting because it means you are making true progress. By stage six, it's all about coordination. Spasticity has finally disappeared. Movements are much smoother. This is when daily activities feel more natural again. Balance improves, your confidence grows. By stage seven, the final stage, where near normal movement returns. You might not be exactly how you were before, but trust me, you're stronger, you're more capable and more functional. Every step you took brought you here. Be proud of that. Let's recap the recovery timeline. Remember, the first three months followed by the next three months and then six to 12 months are critical for making progress that first year. Recovery is not always fast, it's not always linear, but it does follow a path. And each recovery journey is unique. Given that there might be other conditions affecting you and your recovery, it's important that you use this video as a general guideline and that you follow it with your physician and therapy team to plan out your recovery tailored specifically for your needs, your unique journey. Now that you know the stages, you can set realistic goals and celebrate each gain. Make sure you celebrate each victory. Okay, take home tips. Here's your uh, cheat sheet. As you start your recovery journey, the sequence of functional movements is basically start with passive range of motion. Then you progress on to using synergies where you use coordinated groups of muscles to your advantage, such as when picking up a cup of coffee, you have to use several muscles. After that, you can make more use of isolated movements, followed by adding a little bit of resistance and you can even use real life tasks for practice. The key is to stay consistent and track your progress. So go and discuss this with your physician and therapy team to design a game plan tailored specifically for you. And don't forget to uh, get the free Brunson Stages Recovery Progress Tracker in the description section of this video. Let's start wrapping up. Your recovery journey is uniquely yours, but you're not alone. Wherever you are in your journey, Keep moving forward. Remember, progress is made one step at a time. This is not a sprint, it's a marathon. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe, leave comments below, which stage are you on? And is there any content you want? Stay on your path to recovery. Okay, thank you for joining me at Rehab Lab Doc, where science back recovery is made simple. Check out our next video and get your free Brunson Stages Recovery Progress Tracker in the description section. Goodbye.